So on Saturday, we also worked on corner kicks and what we're trying to achieve this week. Um, I just want to go through and highlight the points that we mentioned. Similar to wide free kicks, the, you know, the first thing is that we want to select zones to attack. So each player here is, is selecting a zone to try to get in. Um, and we're also setting picks. I think this is an easy way to get somebody open, especially to the back post, um, which is harder to guard and, and often not usually attacked. Um, so we definitely want to say the same, same principles as a, as a normal wide free kick. In our last video, we had those same type of principles. Players can select zones, get together, talk about it. The player who's picking will end up at the top of the box, um, and everyone else will attack their zones. Um, the, the difference between a wide free kick and, and a corner kick is that we'll want to have two players on the ball to draw players out. Okay, If they have no one here, let's play short and let's attack the space on a dribble and look to, to combine um, or serve a ball in the box. If they have one, um, we can decide if we want to do overlap or not or just or serve the ball in the box. It's up to the players on the ball. Um, but definitely, if there's no one out here, then we definitely want to attack them right, and, and play quickly. So get the ball out, get up, set up early, get out there with two players and see if they, they react to it, how they react to it. Um, uh, for me, or what we discussed on Saturday, we have um, left hand is up is for near post. So we're trying to actually dig, tell, tell where we're serving the ball to our teammates so they know. Um, and right hand is obviously the, to the far post. So for an in-swinger, we want to add, you know, put a ball in either one or two. Right, and for near post, and then for back post, we're trying to get the ball into four. Same same principles as a wide free kick. If the ball goes going over players, you want to work, you know, get yourself ready for a redirect. If the ball gets knocked back down or whatever the case might be, you want to be ready for to, to attack the second balls that are being played, especially if it's a back post ball. Um, I highlighted in practice that I kind of want to uh, attack this space. I know normally we try to put the ball in between you know, the first post and the, the near spot, but actually let's, let's aim for a spot just outside of the near post guy. Uh, I think, you know, these players aren't typically very good at coming out to win the ball. And if we could whip a ball in here, because they're, they're more concerned about protecting any balls on the ground or protecting balls uh, in this space. Um, let's put a ball just outside of them and see if we can get somebody here to head the ball back to the back post. Um, but these, these runs are pretty much the same. You're running towards the middle of the goal. One's running at the keeper towards the keeper. One's running near post, one's running back post. Um, and same thing with the setting of a pick here. Let's work with the partner. This person's setting a pick here on this defender, um, and then he's getting around. I put the defenders in here now so you can see it. Uh, you know, step in here first, get the defender work in one direction, and then work back post. And as he's turning to run after you, boom, you get hit him with a pick, and then this person pulls out to the top of the box. Uh, depending on the numbers, like if we have two players out here and they send two players, they, you know, they've learned their lesson. They, they have two players out here and they're alert. We'll have our third player, since there's no forward up here, drop in and on the keeper. Um, so he can provide you know, a, a screen on the keeper and move with them. And as we discussed in practice, as the ball's traveling, you, you pretty much act like you're a keeper. You, get in the, you, you move as if you were the ball's going across the goal. You, you run or move your feet and get in front of the, stay in front of the keeper as best you can. So when the ball gets headed towards the keeper, he doesn't have an easy uh, save to make or an, a clear sight on the ball. Uh, so this player is important in terms of screening the goalkeeper without fouling, obviously. Um, no hands up. If we don't put any hands up, we're going to play short. And, and short on the right-hand side, as we talked about in practice, is a touch and cross. The player will just tap a ball short, and this player will run up and swing the ball in. The second time, obviously, if the players are, read, are reading it, second time, ex you want to read the defender and see if he's running at you with speed and jumping to try to block the cross, right, because we've, we've done it once before. Fake the cross and try to dribble along the line past him. Right, especially if you, you sell the fact that we did it once and it, it, it's effective. All right, now read it and see if he's aggressive to say, oh, is he going to come when I play this short ball? And then you could fake it and run in behind. On the left hand side, we're on the left hand side of the field when we have a short corner. We're going to do a normal overlapping play since it's an in swinger with the right. Uh, the reason why we don't do a, uh, an overlap on this side is natural. We're not natural. We don't have too many lateral left footers that are taking free kicks or taking corner kicks. So it's, it's a better service if we just tap the ball and serve the ball with our right than having to do an overlap play where the ball might get hit short and they can counter us. So we're going to stick to touch and hit on this side. And this side, if we do play short, we'll do a, a normal overlap play where the player decides and dishes to the player overlapping and then whips in the ball to the back post with his right foot. So those are the, the things that we've, we discussed on uh, Saturday. And the general principles are the same um, on all set pieces. We want to pick zones, you know, lose your man, Get there early. Get up and head down, right? If you're on, if you're on the near side of the of the 
of the goal, you know, near post or, you know, halfway through the goal and closest to the ball, you want to flick the ball to the back post. If you're on the opposite side, you want to head the ball to the near post. If you're at back post, you want to head near. If you're near post, you want to head back, right? That's generally speaking what you want to do on these so that it gives us your best chance of scoring. And as always, if there's a redirect type of play where the ball gets played to the back post, where we're trying to isolate, say, Garrett to get him open, you know, look, these players now have to be alert to, to, to get any knockdowns and get in front of the keeper and, and just be scrappy and, and win and score a goal. So those are the main points that we worked on on, on Saturday and just wanted to review those.